Did you know that you can repurpose some plastic bottles to store your dry goods in your long-term storage? Hi, I'm Jonathan. And Kyleen Jones, and we are the Provident Preppers. Sometimes we need to get a little bit creative in order to package our food storage on a budget. And yet it's vitally important that it's packaged correctly for long-term storage. One way that we have found to do this is by packaging dry goods in used peat plastic bottles. In this video, we will teach you what you need to know so that you can store your dry goods in these plastic bottles. We have had viewers asking how they can package dry goods in plastic bottles. And so, based on your request, here you go. So why do we want to repurpose these peat bottles? Well, first of all, they're inexpensive. It's something that most of us have around our homes. Usually it just ends up in the trash, sometimes recycled. But in any case, it's available to us almost free of charge. It comes in a variety of sizes that are readily available. And it does reduce waste for those who can't recycle. They are convenient and they do a great job of storing dry goods and water. Now let's talk about what foods are good candidates for packaging in peat bottles. First of all, we're only going to do the dry goods and those need to be low in moisture and low in oil. That means that you could store white rice in peat bottles for a very long time. However, brown rice, due to its high oil content, is not a good candidate for long-term storage and can only be stored for a short period of time before it goes rancid. It's important to understand that the whole grain will maintain quality and storage much longer than a milled grain will. So wheat stores longer than flour. Whole corn will store longer than cornmeal. Rolled oats store longer than oat flour and dry beans store longer than bean flour. As you are packaging your food storage, if you are wanting to get the optimal shelf life that you can, make sure that you store it in its whole form. And there are some foods that just should not be packaged in peat bottles with an oxygen absorber. Some of them will go rancid in storage. Some might actually develop botulism in a reduced oxygen environment. We don't want to ever do anything risky when we're storing food storage. The items listed here are all on your don't store these in a peat bottle with an oxygen absorber list. Let's learn how to package dry goods in the peat bottle. First thing you're going to do is you're going to select the right bottle. Turn the bottle upside down and at the bottom you will see some type of a recycling symbol. The plastic bottles that we want to use have a recycle symbol with the number one and we'll say PET or PETE underneath the symbol. And they must have a screw top lid so that they can create an airtight seal. That means no flip top or pop off tops. None of these type of lids will provide an airtight environment. If you're questioning whether or not the lid's a good lid, take your container, screw the lid on tight, put it underneath water and squeeze it. If you see any air coming out of that bottle, it's not a good choice. These are some great examples of bottles that you can use. Soda bottles and juice bottles just work really well. I don't use any of the bottles in my pantry that are difficult to clean, such as these oil bottles. They meet all the other criteria for being able to store food, but they're very difficult to clean well, which could be problematic when it comes to storing dry goods. There are some wide mouth jars that are good candidates for peat bottles for your long-term storage. However, many of them are not. I don't like to use the peanut butter jars. For one, they're just difficult to clean like the oil jars. If I put them in the dishwasher, they tend to melt, but it just doesn't have that airtight seal that the smaller bottles have on it. That being said, I do have a few favorite wide mouth jars that I will use for long-term storage of dry goods. These are some bad choices and ones that you do not want to use. For example, the vinegar container does not have the right kind of cap, and also the vinegar odor is embedded into the plastic. And the milk type jugs are just a bad choice all around. They've been engineered to degrade and they will not work for this. In addition, it's important to only use bottles that have held edible foods or liquids in them in the past. I'm a huge fan of the quart size bottles for packaging dry goods. The quart bottles hold about two pounds of rice or beans which is just about the perfect amount to feed our family of six. 
If you don't want to purchase your food in the bulk size 25 or 50 pound bags, every time you go to the grocery store, pick up an extra package of beans or rice and put it into a clean bottle and package it and build your food supply very quickly, very easily. And the two liter or two quart bottles are about the right size bottle to hold the wheat that I need to make one batch of bread. And the gallon jugs hold about the same amount as a number 10 can. I especially like to repurpose apple juice jugs because of the easy to carry handles. Another important part of the process is protecting the food from insect infestation. One of the best ways to do this is to use oxygen absorbers. They protect against insect damage, but they also preserve the quality of the food and they prevent the growth of aerobic pathogens. Brigham Young University published a study entitled Feasibility of Reusing Peat Soda Bottles to Exclude Oxygen During Storage of Low Moisture Foods. Pretty much what this study says is that it takes 12 days in an oxygen reduced environment to kill insects at all stages of development and that the peat bottles have the ability to maintain that low oxygen environment for at least a year. Oxygen absorbers begin to work the moment they are in an oxygen rich environment. In order to keep them viable, I always take my oxygen absorbers and place them into a canning jar and only use one or two at a time. Oxygen absorbers come in a variety of sizes. For peat bottles up to a one gallon size, you only need a 300 cc oxygen absorber packet. Now, if you use a 500 cc packet, it's not a big deal. What happens with the oxygen absorbers is they will absorb all of the oxygen until it's gone, and then the reaction stops until more oxygen is present. So if you use a larger oxygen absorber, it's not a big deal. However, you need to make sure that you use at least one that is large enough to do the job. For our purposes, the 300 cc oxygen absorbers are plenty for packaging in a peat bottle. Oxygen absorbers are the best way to go because they both kill the bugs and they help preserve the quality of the food. However, you can store food without using that method just by using the freeze thaw method. Start by packaging the grain in the bottles and sealing the lids tightly and then you're going to place them in the freezer for two or three days. Utah State University Extension recommends this process. For containers from one to 15 pounds, they say we should put them in the freezer for two to three days to make sure that they're frozen. That should kill the adult insects. Then we remove the bottles from the freezer, place them at room temperature where they are allowed to thaw for 24 hours. Then we will place them back in the freezer for that two to three days and repeat that cycle. It should be noted that multiple freeze thaw cycles may be required in order to kill all insects at all stages of development. The key here is that you only need to use one of these methods. We prefer the oxygen absorbers. I think that's a better way to go. But if that doesn't work, you can use the freezing method, but you don't need to use more than one. And now with all the details out of the way, it's time to get started talking about how to package food storage in peat bottles. And the first step is to empty the bottles. And it always is best if as soon as that bottle is emptied, you rinse it out immediately. We start by removing the labels. Next, we wash the bottles and the lids in hot soapy water. Make sure that you scrub those lids well. You can see on the right a water bottle cap that has grown something nasty in there. It seems like the lids are a weak point and a place that we really need to pay attention. Make sure you rinse the bottles thoroughly to remove all the soap residues. And then take those clean rinsed bottles and we need to sanitize them. I just fill up my sink with cool water and put a half a cup of fresh bleach. Clorox states that you should use two teaspoons of fresh chlorine bleach in one gallon of cool water and soak for at least two minutes to sanitize your bottles. I have a really large sink and so a half a cup is about the right amount for us. I let these bottles actually sit for five or 10 minutes, much longer so that they have plenty of contact time. And during this process, I will occasionally spin the bottle around so that every part of the inside of that bottle comes into contact with the bleach solution. Take those bottles out of the sanitizing solution, don't rinse them, and allow them to air dry on the counter. I like to lean them up against my backsplash to allow better airflow. Count on this process taking a couple of days, more or less, depending on the temperature. And it's important to select the right funnel. The dry foods 
come in a variety of sizes and the neck sizes vary from bottle to bottle. So you're just gonna need to pick out the one that works well for you or in our case, we even made one out of a piece of cardstock and some tape. We then put the oxygen absorber right in the bottom of the bottle. And fill the bottle with your dry food. And while you're filling, make sure that you take time to tap the bottle and help to settle the contents. And then keep filling and keep tapping and fill that bottle completely to the top. There is no benefit to leaving headspace at the top of the bottle when you're packaging dry goods for food storage. Take a slightly damp cloth and very carefully clean the edge to make sure that there's no debris on that rim that might prevent you from having an airtight seal. Then put the lid on tightly and make sure you snug that down. We really want to make sure we get an airtight seal. And to help ensure that we do have that airtight seal, it's important to secure that lid with tape. This is some fun duct tape that the girls used to secure these lids. One of the things I really like about these bottles is that I can see through them, but we always label the bottles with both the contents and the date that it was packaged. Sometimes the black Sharpie will rub off a little bit, and so you might want to use a good quality mailing label and stick on there, but most of the time we just stick with the permanent marker. One of the things you might want to consider doing if you are packaging food in smaller containers is to cut the label off of the original packaging that has the cooking instructions on it. I found that this can be very helpful. And we just attach those to the bottle using some packing tape. As with all food storage, we want to make sure these bottles are stored in a cool, dark, and dry place. We like to store our bottles in these apple boxes. They protect against light, but they also help us to organize them and we can stack these on top of each other to maximize space usage. Warning, these bottles are not rodent proof, so you need to make sure that you protect them against those critters. We don't have any issues with rodents in our storage room. If you do have rodent issues, make sure that you package these in a heavy tote or a metal garbage can or some other way that will protect against those rodents. And there you have it. This is a simple method where you can package your long-term food supply in containers that you can get for free. No more excuses. It's time to get busy and start building your food storage. For lots more details on this, check out our post, Packaging Dry Foods in Plastic Bottles for Long-Term Food Storage. You might also be interested in a video that we created using Mylar bags to package your food storage at home. And finally, check out the video on enemies to your food storage. If we are going to make this food last a long time, we have to battle those enemies that shorten that shelf life. Check this out. No more excuses. You can do this. You can build your family food supply by purchasing it commercially, already packaged and ready to go. You can package it yourself in Mylar bags, plastic buckets, or even in free recycled peat bottles. With a little bit of consistent effort, you can build your food supply so that regardless of what happens in the world around us, you can feed your family. And now for the questions of the day. What experience do you have packaging food in plastic bottles? And what advice do you have for our viewers? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.